Well, hello, Amanda. Can you hear me? Hello? Well, hello everyone. Sorry for a little bit delay. Um, first of all, thank you very much for attending tonight's meeting. And my name is Bo, and I'm the vice president of ecosystem at White Metrics. As usual, a few rules before we get to start it. Um, the first is if you have a question, please type it in the QA function in YouTube Live. And we will select one or two questions, <coughs> extra time between each section. The second is please no spamming. If you're spam, you will be moved from the event. So today's topic is about crypto art and NFT. The non-fungible token of NFT is a unit of data added to a file stored in a digital ledger, which creates a unique signature. It can be an image file, a song, a tweet, a text on a website, a physical item or other digital formats of various kinds with characteristics of non-repeatable and uniqueness. Lately, more and more crypto artists show particular interest in actualizing their sparking ideas with NFT and crypto art. In March of this year, the auction of an NFT from the digital artist Beepo Crab ended with a purchase price of over 69 million US dollars. The impact of the NFT may have long-term effects on the industrial segments beyond arts. It is highly likely that the segments such as venture capital and finance should embrace NFTs as a trusted entrustment for proclaiming and transferring proofs of ownership. The near future will undoubtedly witness an explosive bomb of NFT. So it's just a little brief introduction before we move to the lecture one for our bootcamp course. The first topic is how crypto changes art and what creators can learn from it, from Ms. Han Tang. She is the founder of Crypto C and Art Gallery from Chang. Mr. Tang, are you ready for the speech? Hello, everyone. Uh, so let's have a check. Can you hear me? OK, let me start my topic now. So uh, I just want to talk about two topics today. First is crypto art, what happened in crypto art, and then about the creator economy, is that what creators can learn from uh, crypto artists today. So since the beginning of this year, we have seen many attempts in the crypto art. 
Um, and this practice has all have also spread from artists to commercial creators. We all, we can also see as the metaverse infrastructure build better, the position of creators in the entire ecosystem is increasing. So uh, today I want to share what changes crypto has brought to the art and what creators can learn from it. I think there are three main changes that crypto has brought to art. First, it breaks the middle party dominated by galleries, allowing artists to share um, information to their buyers or their community directly. Second, artists can and uh, communities are increasingly integrated and artworks are more open to um, the artist community. Encouragement of, for secondary creation has never been so popular today. Third, it gives digital art unlimited vitality and allows programmers to enter the field of art. So code has become the most fashionable element in artworks. We can see many of the artists who are popular in art block are programmers. Yes, so it's a very, very good era for um, coders today. Similarly, the trains, these trains are increasingly uh, emerging for, from uh, creators. So I think the this, this three points can be, can let us see many, um, um, so, so many good points for creators, such as um, the creators are, uh, the creators are more, um, they're more working to the organization such as DAO. So let's see. Um, let's see the information. Uh, let's see the relation between creators and metaverse. I think without without creators, there would be no um, metaverse. Just that if there is uh, if there are no workers, there would be also be no modern society today. Uh, so there, um, so here is it. The land cannot grow food without farmers' head work, and the machine cannot produce bread and cartoon clothes without workers' drive. No matter how uh, advanced the equipment, technology, and organizational philosophy we have created, it must be it must be observed and used by creators before it can be transformed into constant assets that can be consumed by people. And as said, as the actual feelings of the metaverse, it is flesh and blood and in intensity. Today, we have already have a lot of uh, metaverse space, such as Decentraland, Sandbox, and Crypto, and the Walk Sales. And there are some new uh, metaverse spaces, such as Matrix um, World. However, even there is a lot of, um, there is a good ecologic metaverse space like crypto walk sales. More than half of the land is left unused. The situation in other metaverse spaces is even worse. At this point, the metaverse in front of us is like an undeveloped world. And it is urgent for people to create here and live on market here. And the creators also need made worse. Let's see how they live in Web2. In the world of Web2, the formation of IP is difficult to leave the boast, the boast of capital and traffic. Since the production and consum consumption of content must rely on a decentralized platform, the platform has become the controller of the flow and the control of the flow has become their cash now. When traffic becomes um, a weapon that can be sold, the competition between content producers is no longer fair. The platform restricts the flow of creators who want to spread their works but have a lot not purchased promotion services, such as independent cartoonists, independent musicians. And the platform controls the flow and the content downstream production chain to courses um, creators to give up the copyright from the beginning is very terrible. 
these are the personal experiences for creators in recent years, especially in China. In the creation system of Web2, since creators do, often do not own the key production materials, such as traffic in IP, they usually become a screw in the entire uh, content industry chain. Most of the pro process will be captured by the capital, not by the creators and their, fine, their, their fans. Therefore, uh, although the content economic system of Web2 appears to please the community, its actual appeal is to attract more consumers by increasing the number of their fines. The actual structure is that capital and creators conspire to harvest fans in the end. Such a production and distribution system is the source of pain for many creators. It is undoubtedly the first that early fans of the creators who make the creators popular and attract the attention of the capital, but they cannot repay the so the creators cannot repay their first of their early fans and make them profitable. It's unfair. Fans who made value discovery in the early days contributed to their own traffic and evaluation. However, they cannot invest and they cannot get um, their profit from the uh, groom of, the, of their IP. So Web3 and also women, the networks in the Web3 can give them a chance to break um, the situation now. We can see many creators when they're down in the metaverse and uh, in the Web3 system. So, uh, the Kevin Kelly once pointed that human beings are actually um, are currently in a trend of unbinding from the employment system. Many people are shifting from corporate employment to independent, in, uh, individualized. Uh, business. So DAO is such an um, organization. You are not employed by the DAO, but you also participated in the uh, business in DAO, and you can get your uh, you can get rewarded by DAO. And if you uh, hold the tokens or the NFT of DAOs, you can also um, your assets can also grow as the DAO grew. And um, let's see how DAO or the Web3 can um, help the creators. Uh, just see how Ian's do. Let's, let's take Ian's as an example. The Ian's project raises funds by selling domain names to the community. And the domain name buyers can be regarded with as the early supporters and consumers of the Ian's project. When Yens has raised fund, developers, uh, we can also say developers like uh, creators, developers can be mobilized to do, uh, develop and uh, maintain the operation of their entire project. When the project uh, progressed to a certain level and Yens also um, was, all, was ready to issue its own tokens, the developers and early supporters of the Ian's project received their tokens. There is, this is a very successful uh, case of bypassing traditional capital, raising funds and implementing develop, development through the community and finally getting things down um, and making creators and the community profitable. You know, uh, I, uh, I talked with uh, some, uh, some investors talked with me about uh, Ian's uh, before and, and they said that they want to invest in Ian's but don't know how. And uh, the Ian's value just captured by, the, by their community. They think it's a very wonderful, wonderful case. And this can be learned by the creators. Also, the crypto work sales can also be a very good 
for example, for creators to learn. Um, we know that we know that uh, crypto work sales first uh, had only um, a very very few developers, and they don't have the um, have any capital to invest in. But by selling the land to community, the entire project has a certain amount of development funds to support their development. Recently, crypto work sales started to um, stated that they will airdrop tokens to the landholders according to the flow of land. So uh, this is another typical case of combining consumers and investors' identities into one. For creators, there are two sources of funding to support projects. One is investors and another is consumers. The organization form of Web3 can combine these two identities into one, allowing fans to directly become uh, investors and even project participants. So this is what happened in, uh, also in crypto art now and do very well. In addition, at the organizational level, there are already, there are already many tools that can help DAOs uh, achieve more um, democratic and the transparent fund ma 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 uh, management and the community auto autonomy. So um, there's a very good uh, example such as um, uh, Backless DAO has demonstrated and um, we can see what tools, what tools we can have today. Uh, you know, we can have snapshots to vote and we can have notion to share information with the other members in the DAO. And we can also have Discord to talk uh, and to use, um, there is a place for you to use your NFTs and tokens to organize and uh, negotiate here. Um, so there are many tools and you, and you can combine them to build your own DAO. And by using these DAOs, creators can, um, can get invested in their DAOs and can share their profit to pro profit in the DAOs. And they can also, um, we can also see this information, this form, this, this form. Um, in the DAO, maybe someone have their lands in the metro space and some others can develop, uh, they can code. And some others have the ideas, they know how to, what they want to build and the side is, and the side designers, they know how to uh, like build better and more beautiful space. Some can operate. Um, they can organize some activities here and attract more flows here. And then their flow of the land may be very, very large and they can be uh, rewarded by uh, the system. They can gain many tokens here and they can share the tokens. So, um, I can see some organization has already started in the metaverse space, and it, and it's very it is a, it's a very good form for creators. Okay, um, let's see the practices in the DAO. Uh, in the DAO, when we talk about DAO, it actually implies a series of tools based in Web three, just as we have mentioned. And at the same time, um, the creators of Web3 are also making a brief charge in the concept, what they are thinking about their IP and what they are creating here. Web2 give creators um, an illusion. They can always hold the copyright in their work. Um, they can say that the law um, protect their copyright and you can hold your copyright to uh, once there are many people like your IP and you will get paid, get a large pay um, in your copyright. However, the distance, the, the, the distance, the distance work, how are you just um, uh, illusion? Why? Because you don't hold, you don't hold capital and you don't hold the inter internet traffic. And you know, in the such, the content in the industry is a very, very, large industry now, if you don't hold to the material, you will eventually 
your 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 copyright will eventually be taken by the large capital or by the large um, corporation. So it's just the illusion. For your first thing, you have the copyright in your hand, and then your copyright will be taken by others in a very low price because they don't have the key ma material. So for creators who step into the Web3 world, um, they will find um, they need more power. But where the, where the power come from? Just come from the community. Um, in the crypto art uh, field, we can see the art are more open to their community and the uh, artists just, uh, um, just uh, uh, co-created with their community together and create and it's, it's the same for creators. Projects such as BAYC have announced from the very beginning that the commercial rights of the work will be guaranteed to the holders of the work. And uh, what's more, the project such as Tails adopted CC0, announcing that anyone can use their work at will, even if you don't buy it. And this just, um, they are rapidly expanding their communities in a short period of time, entangle themselves and the community, and and finally achieve the victory together. So, for creators who enter the, the Web three, uh, you can see the copyright of your work is no longer uh, just belong to you, but belong to the community. In the Web3 era, there will be a, a wealth change in content investment. Content lovers will replace venture capital funds and become the earliest investors in content. People make decisions about the flow of money in their hands according to their tastes and hobbies. And also they can profit from this. It has achieved the true financial democracy. It's like People don't have to earn uh, com complicated economics and finance, and they can complete in an investment in the um, that satisfies them by knowing market information that is that is um, monopolized by the upper class. They don't need to do that. Uh, I don't. I don't need to. Um, I don't need to study many uh, uh, very complicated finance knowledge, um, but I can know what content I'm, I'm, I'm reading and I'm like, and I like, um, I can read and I can, um, my heart will tell me what, what things I like and just invest in them. Um, and ordinary people can um, show their tests together and they can achieve, they can achieve, they can capture the value of the flow and or, or what we see like uh, internet, inter, internet traffic. Um, here the position of investment is reversed. At first it was the institution or the like the, uh, the capital, the very large capital, they held information that was not familiar to ordinary people so they can um, earn a lot of money, earn a lot of money. Now it's the ordinary hobbyist who have become the first to discover good investment targets. We know that the information has, um, has played a very important role in investment. If you get the uh, right information first and you will earn a lot of money by your from your the information. And the DAO may um, reverse the, the role in the investment by um, the information or what we talk like um, uh, valuation discovery. Therefore, the source of the content IP will um, change greatly. In our lifetime, we may be um, rescued from the IP system of Hollywood and, the, and Disney. And there are more and more IP will be born in the community or in doubts. Right now, we are living in a dangerous area. The content industry um, monopolized by platforms with vast 
amounts of data is dying. You can see, um, especially especially like the um, network platform in China, like just like Tencent, um, they have a lot of data and they just uh, they're just uh, telling what um, what kind of books if you are writing and they will get popular. So the writers are guided by the data, not by their heart, not by their experience. It's very dangerous because um, people are not, uh, it's like the people are producing content, not by people, but by, by data. The algorithm platform replaces the um, personal experience of the creator. So human factors is being increasingly separated, which is a disaster for the content industry. So the areas co just calls for a new value discovery and the evaluation system for, for creators. If so, we will enter the era of DAO. So let's see what you can do, what coders can do for them, for that. Um, if you like art, coders can um, build, can use code to build their own artwork. But if, if you don't, um, if you don't want to, if you just want to do more things, I think art is, um, I think art is like, um, uh, um, it's not, it's all, it's not a normal thing, but creators are very, very ordinary. And if you want to build things with more people, you can enter this uh, tendery. You can join their DAO because many creators don't know how to code. And if, if, you, if they want to achieve um, success, they need coders to join them. Let's see what kind of problems uh, creators have in the Web3 content system. Many creators are not clear about the tools, what uh, Web3 can, can call, and how to um, use them to organize the community. And they are also immersed in creation, um, and they don't know how, where to find the Web3 audiences and how to find partners from the community who can help them to run the community and the projects. So creators does not know how to implement the benefit distribution within DAO. Yes, they don't know. And creators don't know how to issue NFTs and how to cash out after the NFTs are issued. Also, the investors does not know how to interact with other communities and how to expand the community. Even the creators don't know where to find help and get answers when they encounter the about thing problems. So there's a lot of things we can do today. Um, and also we are building a DAO like uh, an NC DAO to help, um, to just to help creators to um, enter Web3 easily. Um, and, and here uh, I will also call up um, the coders to join this kind of um, the, movement, the movement. I think in the... Uh, next Asia, we will live in the world um, where IP is where IP are produced by the communities, and um, ordinary people can get paid um, from their tastes easily, but not from such um, unfair um, finance system today. So um, right now, we need uh, a frontal. Is uh, a friend to introduce um, creators from the Web two world to the uh, to the Web three world. There are many things for coders to do. I think the tools today are not that uh, um, um, it's, it's not are uh, not are not that um, um, you you still have a lot of uh, space to invest uh, invent new uh, new tools today. And if you build these tools, we can introduce to the creators and we can also help you to join to more creator jobs. Um, yeah, 
So my topic is ended today. So thank you. Uh, thank you for the speak, Ms. Tong. We have um, a little question for you. All right, uh, the second topic is the concise uh, expressions on voxel art from Nova. Um, he is the producer of Riverman and chairman of the managing board at True Work of NA. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Um, Nova is on business travel now, so he entrusted us to share his lecture today um, about his topic. Please uh, feel free to join us in the Discord channel uh, for more detailed information if you have um, questions related. Hello everyone. Sorry for absence due to some delay while my traveling back to Shanghai. I'm about about uh, ten kilometers from the Earth now, so um, that's why I have to meet you guys in such a short video. Today we want to talk about some abstractive concepts and some less abstractive experiences my, from my NFT project. Uh, as you see, as you see, this topic is quite simple. Just three points will be talked about today. So to save your precious time, let's begin now. At the beginning, I'll talk about the history of art. We will draw a rough picture with several notes in it. The first note, classic cut. It is an unbearable time, a no, an unbearable long time for those artists evolving their techniques in art in order to approach the reality somehow. So we can see some sculptures, pictures. They are so delicate that even look like some real one. Yet when cameras show up, artists got confused. They might have asked themselves one same question. Will my painting look more real than a picture from a camera? And if not, why should I draw such thing? And just at, the, at this moment, some brilliant artists stood out and tried to realize this world with their unique point of view. So there came a new question. Did we need reality? so badly? To answer that question, much more artists showed up, gathered, and just like a galaxy. They found their different ways to provide a solution. They deform, exaggerate, or even defile the reality. And not until this moment did people know that the facts matter, yet opinions matter too. So here comes a few reflections. Firstly, the work of art itself is an expression and a medium to transfer one's experience to another. But what differs art from plain explanation is the entropy of information. When I speak, uh, what, oh, yeah. What is the entropy of information? Let me explain it to you. So, 
When I speak an A to you, you have an A in your mind. Yet, I can draw a right A on paper. When you watch that painting,、uh, you when you watch that painting, you will have a right A in your mind. And what's more, the bright red color. But surely, cause some emotional variation in your mind. Thus, you've got experiences more than I expressed, and that is what I call it entropy of information. And next, what matters is the comprehensive of expression, not the form. And due to the entropy of information, the exper、uh, the expressions of beauty tends to receive more reflections, which is, from my point of view, the function of beauty. Now. Let's talk about Riverman. When we start this project, there are two choices lying before us: to reach the ultimate reality or to be abstracted. I believe you have heard a theory called the Uncanny Valley, which means before. One virtual figure, real enough to reach the to reach the ultimate reality, and in that moment,、uh, before that moment, the more it looks real, the more horrible it makes men feel. And to pick one path. From these two, we came to another conclusion. In the field of pop culture, the quantity of information matters more than the quality, so we should choose the quicker way: abstraction. And what makes us more confident about this choice? Is that we believe the aesthetic opinion is strange, and sometimes contradicts itself. It born it is born to seek differences, but usually ends in seeking common grounds. So we think building a bridge of understanding between expressors and audiences. Brings a great enjoyment to both. So these are the guidelines of the Riverman design. Firstly, abstract a whole homogenized form or polygon and it, and deform it into a cube. Second, ignore the redundant. Variety varieties of forms, but focus on their basic topology,、uh, topological relations. And the third, replace the details in texture with models. In a nutshell, pursue the likeness of spirit instead of the likeness of appearance. Leave a white space. Now let's talk about the world we were built. <laughs> Three points we should consider when it comes to the construction of scenes. One, understandable. So, understandable is the basic. Um, principle you need to follow when you are build 
when you are building a scene. Recording in progress. It is reconstructable. Maybe voxel is a better way to construct this world because voxels are more simple to use us and it is also easy for them to rebuild this world through voxels. And because we use voxel style to build that world, to show them, uh, show this, uh, this world to users, we can make sure that users will use voxels to build some kind of uh, assets or building or some other kind of stuff, but they are look just familiar or even the same with our products. And above all, use Voxel styles makes you fast. Do it fast is the most important thing in gaming or NFT developing. Because you are quick, you can turn the ship around when the market trends change. And because you are quick, you can catch up with hot events at the first chance. And be quick, be nimble, be sharp. There's no perfect strategy, but do it fast. After all, these are just my opinions. Last, but not the least. Never, ever, ever stop thinking. Thank you. All right, thanks for the sharing. Um, our third topic is uh, entering the metaverse, why NFT are important from Amber. Ms. Amber is the director of Dapper Labs in China. So Ms. Amber, are you ready for the speech? Uh, yes, thank you. I will share my screen. <clears throat> okay, can I start now? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm member head of China, head of China from Dapple Labs. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm excited to share this presentation with you. So, um, a brief intro about me. Um, I started to to blockchain research in 2016 and entered into industry in 2017. I co-founded one of the largest Chinese blockchain content community platform, Bihu.com, grew its users to millions. And later on, I helped Flo enter the Chinese market as a consultant and formally joined the team this year. Currently, I'm in charge of the China strategy. Um, let me introduce Depolabs first. Depo Labs is a consumer blockchain company. Uh, what we cared about is to create a future with consumer grade decentralized applications. Uh, we are the creators of CryptoKitties, NBA Tashat, Depo Wallet, and Flow Blockchain. And CryptoKitties was the number one popular collectible game in history. Um, it also introduced a framework for NFTs, ERC721, which is still the gold standard for NFTs today. 
We are also the creators of MBA Toshot. MBA Toshot is an, the best example of how big brands embrace a decentralized world, and it is the most rapidly growing market of digital collectibles today. MBA Toshot um, could allow fans for the first time own the highlights of their favorite NBA teams and players, the greatest moments in NBA history. And um, Devon Wallet is instrumental to NBA Toshot's success um, because it could provide seamless experience during user onboarding and offer simple credit card payment so that users could engage with NBA Toshot without needing any knowledge of how transactions work or any worries about where or how their NFTs are being stored. And Devon Wallet aims to provide the same seamless experience too. So uh, many Flow ecosystem partners, um, they could use Devon Wallet and they could have a shared experience in the future. Flow blockchain um, is a blockchain for consumer scale applications and um, has proved to be the world's fastest growing blockchain. Many big brands and IP have partnered with Dapple Labs and Flow to create a brand new digital experience for their billions of fans. For example, here are some of our partners, um, including Samsung, Ubisoft, Animoca Brands, NFL, NBA, One of Music Groups, etc. And most of them have already built or started to build their platforms on Flow blockchain bringing their fans into the blockchain world by creating seamless, innovative digital experience. <clears throat> Back to um, our topic today, before we discuss why NFTs are important, um, let's first take a quick look at when, what NFTs are. NFTs are um, records of ownership that exist on open ledger, and can be verified cryptographically. They are essentially contracts that represent ownership of items, uh, which could include digital arts, collectibles, and in-game properties. They could also um, represent ownership of physical assets, such as properties and financial notes. Um, in one world, NFTs define the non-fungible elements of the digital world. And next, um, let's talk about the origin of NFTs. Here, I would like to take you through the lens of applications, blockchain platforms, and terminology. Um, regarding applications, the first verifiable record of digital ownership and transaction data back as early as 2014, when um, Kevin McCoy created Quantum. Um, it is a live demonstration of a new uh, monetized graphic system and he used Namecoin to mint a non-fungible, it easily tradable token that exhibitly pointed to this piece of art. He then sold it. Um, on the blockchain platforms front, in 2012, Manny Rosenfield proposed using ColorCoin to color Bitcoin to issue assets. Color coins are um, made of small denominations of Bitcoin and could be as small as a single Satoshi. Um, color coins could be used to track um, the digital and real world assets held by third parties, for example, like properties, coupons, equities, and bonds. Um, it's just like the FBI using fluorescent instruments to track dollar bills. Um, once the dollar bill is sprayed, it becomes different from all others. However, um, there's a problem with color coin is that if you accidentally put two color coin in one account, they will become indistinguishable. Uh, later on, there's your team called Counterparty, um, which created an SDK building on the idea of color coins. Then um, collectible games such as Spell of Genesis, Red Pepe popped up, but it was on Ethereum that the concept of NFTs first became popular. Um, on the terminology side, um, the term NFT was first coined by Ethereum community and became well-known after um, ERC-721 standard um, that was initiated and co-authored by Devil as CTO D. Shirley. Um, ERC-721 standardized digital NFTs. It defines the most important property of NFTs, 
namely uniqueness. And um, in addition to ERC721, ERC1155 is another popular NFT standard, but uh, it is a multi-token standard. In other words, it defines the token type, uh, which contains multiple items under the same class. The NFTs under the same class are only different by their IDs. Um, other than that, they are identical. Also, um, we saw composable non-fungible standards like ERC-998 um, that says an item can be composed of several NFTs divided into parent and child tokens. Um, you could imagine it as a house. Um, the house is um, the parent token and um, all kinds of furniture then are the child tokens. You could transfer both the house and the furniture in one transaction or only one piece of the furniture. And um, all these different standards apply to different use cases and making themselves um, increasingly relevant to the real world. Um, and now let's move on to why NFTs are important. Um, I think the value of NFT lies in three aspects. Um, first is the medium of, of culture. Uh, let's take NBA Tasha as an example. Um, NBA trading cards have existed, existed for more than 70 years. Um, they appeared almost at the same time as the NBA. But um, in the past, due to the devaluation of US dollar and the increasing variety of cards, they were considered luxury collectibles, in particular for Chinese basketball fans. If they wanted to collect the physical card, they had to pay a very high fee. It sometimes still couldn't get what they want due to information symmetry. But um, NFTs will give people an equal chance to own their favorite collectibles. And basketball fans are spared from the braiding or authentication process and could truly own those valuable moments. And uh, second, NFTs could store uh, much richer content. Um, we know in the past, manufacturer of uh, um, physical NBA cards kept upgrading the materials and visuals of trading cards, but they could only represent static images. NFT cards take things one step further by allowing the display of multimedia content including um, images, audio, and videos, etc. cetera. And um, for sport fans, they feel much more satisfied watching videos and photos. With the maturation of uh, um, AR, VR, and um, new technologies such as screen computer interface, um, holographic media equipment, these valuable moments will be able to play out in more colorful formats that are free from constraint of space and medium. And um, third, NFTs are tickets of a particular club. Um, as NFTs are transferred, uh, could be transferred and um, are not replicable, so they could represent limited access to specific items. Another um, advantage of NFTs is that a community naturally builds around them. Um, like, uh, you know, collecting things like paintings, watches, or stamps is most of the time a super lonely experience. You might not find like-minded people for a very long time. Usually you had to attend a lot of offline events or gatherings to meet more of them, but um, collecting NFTs make the whole thing different. The NFT collectors of um, like one basketball team from NBA might have thousands or tens of thousands of followers online. They gather together for sharing the same interest and therefore forming communities naturally. Um, as for the typical use cases of NFT, I think they mainly appeal to two types of needs. First, is um, the needs of crypto natives for consumption and a cultural identity. Um, I think the most representative here is PFP applications such as CryptoPunks and BOIC. Um, like after years of development, the blockchain industry has seen an increasing number of firm believers in crypto assets <clears throat> and um, they have laid down a sound economic foundation for the crypto world. And now they want to satisfy their desire for consumption, cultural identity, 
Um, this is like the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Um, PIP application, they can, to some extent, crunch the thirst for identity, thus appealing, appealing to the crypto native spiritual satisfaction. And on the Flow blockchain, uh, we have very interesting PFP project called Flowavatar, where users could collect different components and mix them up to build their own avatar. This would allow users to unleash their creativity and uh, also earn lifetime royalty as the original creator. And um, second, um, the cultural and entertainment industry needs for change. Um, I think the traditional cultural and uh, recreational industries um, are facing the challenge of digital transformation. Um, like last year, the COVID and the economic slowdown have already hit traditional industry hard. Um, we've observed that a lot of galleries and auction houses started to move online by opening a digital exhibition halls and hosting online auction events. In addition, given big platforms monopoly over resources and uh, policy reasons over some specific regions, um, blockchain um, with this market-based mechanism could definitely help creators or developers get rid of intermediaries and win back the power. Um, like, um, for example, we are seeing more and more indie games transform towards blockchain games in order to find a new way out. Um, these will lead to substantial benefits. Like for the gaming industry, traditional games are always fighting a battle between what's the value of my customer and what's the cost, what's my cost of acquiring that customer. <clears throat> NFTs um, and blockchain change both those numbers. Um, what it does is that it increases the LTV of each customer. As these objects are valuable and customers know that they could truly own and sell them later, so they end up spending many more times in the blockchain game than they would in the mobile game. Another thing is that you lower your acquisition costs because every single one of your customers had the chance to become an evangelist. Um, if your game economy does well, then people will actively share the message on their social media like Twitter, WeChat, they will tell people on boarding to the ecosystem, which would decrease your acquisition cost. And um, the third benefit of blockchain games compared with traditional games is that they add the developer ecosystem basically to any game and create network effect around the game by letting developers build on top of those assets and create new experiences with them. Um, for example, it could be CryptoKitties with uh, Kitty Hats or Kitty Rays. And like the more thing people build for a game, it gives an incredible network effect, which is super helpful. Um, here, let me share two specific cases. Um, on the Flow blockchain, there's an MMORPG game called Chain Monsters. Um, it was developed by a traditional gaming company besides games. Um, Within Chain Monsters, you could catch, battle, trade, and compete with digital monsters in a multiplayer open world. Um, it's just like the classic monster catching game like Pokemon, but it adds an extra layer to the gameplay thanks to NFTs and also block flow blockchain. Um, Chain Monsters raised their initial funds via pre-sale of in-game properties, which could also serve um, as proof of concept it not only um, helps a team get quick feedback about um, how the market likes a specific design or not, um, but also establish close relations with users from early on. And uh, Chain Monsters concluded its alpha phase with over 70K players, while the Genius Genesis drop sold out in minutes, gener generating over 1 million sales and is about to release its closed beta version very soon. Um, another example is NBA Tarshad, um, the first mainstream crypto app, um, which allows those who know nothing about blockchain to purchase blockchain assets with their credit cards. And um, 
Actually, um, from uh, the data of its beta version, um, showed that the user retention rate is um, as high as 90%. And uh, within six months after its launch, um, it registered 700 million US dollar sales with over 1 million users. And only 20% of them are crypto users. Um, and most of collectors have never used blockchain before and wanted to support their favorite players. So um, MA Top Shot is phenomenal. Um, it had also proved to be the fastest growing digital collectible marketplace in history. Um, one of the key from our experience is that uh, um, to build a successful platform, long-term engagement is super important. We see many big brands, um, they either have issued NFTs or are planning to do so, but a large number of them know digital collectibles only and a way to bring a new stream of income, um, either through primary or secondary sales. Um, as a result, many IP-based collectibles lost traction as quickly as they gained momentum. They didn't provide a better experience to users, nor did they think about um, long-term operations of communities and user retention. Sometimes they even didn't sell to the right users. So as a result, for all the community that formed spontaneously around NFTs, these brands would fail to tap into their value. And the worst thing is the brand's image suffered permanent damage. While um, in NBA Top Shot, to make users feel more involved and um, have long-term engagement, we have designed a very important system, um, the collector score system that um, assigns each moment score, um, depending on the tier series and how you get that. And um, this score will give users increased odds as securing packs, particularly legendary packs. So users can collect moments from the same team to, also uh, users could um, collect moments from the same team to improve their score. Um, the collector score system um, mainly has three advantages. Um, first, um, like fandom drive collector score will replace um, SS prices as um, measure of the value of an account. It becomes the number one consideration from collectors, thus increasing their stickiness and retention. And uh, second, the collector, collector score system means that um, users can deploy different strategies and um, enjoy the fun of it. It will also prompt people to pay attention to less popular cards, thus um, adding to their utility. And um, third, when, when it takes a particular score um, to net specific packs, uh, legendary packs will have a higher chance of being collected by true fans rather than speculators. Um, and on top of that, we've seen constantly unlocking new experience um, for users based on the needs of those basketball fans. For example, um, we've partnered with um, um, Instagram Sports to bring um, NBA Touch Out Live via AR so that users could enjoy a more um, immersive experience um, and also through our interaction with followers on Twitter and questionnaires, we've planned a multitude of offline events to reward the collectors. For example, we picked um, a collector of Phoenix Suns based on their scores um, and invited them to the game five of NBA finals and enjoy close interaction with their favorite players and team. We've also created special patterns out of the playground and some Tasha moments and turn them into virtual sneakers. Um, another example is Quavo's Quest, um, which um, is um, uh, who is a musician with over 23 million followers. Um, in this quest, users could um, unlock a digital experience with Quavo's avatar, including performance from Quavo's new album by finishing his quest on Tasha platform. They may also win a signed jersey. And um, in addition to sign item by Superstar, we've also partnered with um, 
Sacramento Kings and Lava to um, release the first ever smart ticket NFT that assign more than just a rise to a seat, um, but also the rise to a variety of additional benefits, um, such as merchandise, exclusive experiences, and digital collectibles. And all of those could be sold and exchanged together with the NFT. Um, and um, next, I would like to talk about um, how NFTs could be combined with metaverse. So <clears throat> from what we see, human civilization will migrate to the digital world sooner or later. As NFTs define non-fungible items in the virtual world, um, they are in indispensable atom of the metaverse. Um, they will become cornerstone of civilization in the operations of metaverse and um, the digital goods and creative content that are represented by NFTs will be the building blocks of metaverse. Um, NFT standards will determine um, the interoperability of different experiences in the metaverse and the portability of digital items. And um, avatar NFTs will be an important portal via which users can enter the metaverse. So NFTs are intertwined with metaverse in every aspect. Um, what we want to achieve, um, I think metaverse is still in its infancy. What attract me um, the most is that as resources in the real world are infinite, and the metaverse, we could actually try a lot of experiments with much lower cost and um, in the ideal envi environment to test our scientific hypothesis. Take, um, take the 1996 Dharma experiment. The, um, the experiment was conducted to detect dark matter particles from a depth of um, 1,400 meters underground. Due to the different characteristics of the, um, the output of night crystals, the detection result contained an error. So um, in the following 20 years, none of the DM detection experiment was able to reproduce the DAMA results. Um, since it, it is because every, um, the even tiny difference in the equipment would make a huge difference in the result. Um, as, as a result, the progress was really slow, but uh, imagine in the metaverse, we could reuse NFTs to build the same environment and use the same parameter and physical laws to do as many simulations as we want. Um, in this way, we could unleash maximum productivity at a very low cost. Um, and in the metaverse, users are more than consumers. Mm, they could take on multiple roles as they no longer sit on a demand side and um, the platforms are no longer um, mere suppliers. So users will naturally become involved in ecosystem building and um, content will be spread to a broader audience and creators will be rewarded and recognized to a greater extent. Um, like in a traditional game platform, even in Roblox, your creation is only consumed by other players in the game. But with NFTs, your creations will catch the eyes of the gamer outside. Um, in other words, creators will be rewarded beyond the closed um, gaming system. Um, also, collaborations will become fairer. Um, for example, in the a world of Warcraft, to measure individual contributions, Gal have developed the DKP system. It in the metaverse with NFTs, individuals' con contributions will be directly recorded on chain. So it will become fairer. And finally, um, personal creation will be stored permanently, permanently in NFTs. In other words, if, um, even if you quit a game, um, your creation will still enjoy the long tail benefits. Um, say like via royalties, you mentioned you have created a masterpiece in the game and sold it to others. It got resold um, as an original creator. You want recognition from a new buyer and would enjoy relevant royalties even if you are not playing the game anymore. And um, 
Currently, um, platform and products are still silos, each building its own ecosystem. Um, what I'm really looking forward to is seeing NFT portable across the various ecosystem so that users' assets will have more use case and additional value. On um, what makes Flow the best blockchain for the metaverse, um, I think it's because Flow is only blockchain for mass market, which serves as a bridge between Web 2 and Web 3 from the start. Um, the market frenzy around um, crypto native content um, may end up in a bubble and there are in no way true metaverse. And on the technical side, um, Flow is also one of bad choices too, because um, like as an app developer, you don't just want a faster blockchain, you want a blockchain that makes easy for you to build a great business. And so really when we decide to build Flow, we try to build blockchain that make it easier for developers to be successful and build great businesses and for us too. Um, there were three um, core tenants. The first one is that it needs to be easy and safe to build your app. And so we've built a language um, that is much easier than Solidity. We build um, paradigms that make it make it much easier to build on top of each other smart contracts. And we really embrace the core, what we call composability, um, the ability for people to build on top of each other, which we think is one of the superpowers of blockchain. And um, the second thing is we needed to make it fast. So we build a blockchain that is faster in about um, thousand times faster than Ethereum today. And the third one is, um, well, now that it's easy for app developers to build on top of blockchains, we needed to make it easy for users to access those blockchains. So we built, and you could check it out on NBA Top Shot, um, a seamless wallet that accepts any currency that doesn't require a plugin, um, doesn't require you to remember secret seed and password, um, to really focus on making it easy for developers, for users to access the app. And what's more, we also wanted to bring users to Flow. Um, so we teamed up with biggest IP and brands in the world, like NBA, Falk, UFC Falk, uh, DR Swiss, and large tech companies like Ubisoft, Tuna Media, to tap into those user bases to bring them in. Um, that other developers can build. Um, here are some data on Flow ecosystem. Uh, Flow actually boosts more than 2.4 million wallets nine months after battle launch of the first step and the Tasha. By way of comparison, uh, nine months into DeFi summer of 2020, there were only 1.5 wallets that had ever interacted with any DeFi protocol. Um, and also flow leads the industry in a number of NFT sender cells with over 10 million NFT trades and um, 50 million blockchain transactions today. Um, by comparison, X Infinity has settled about 6 million, Ethereum has settled about 3 million NFT trades. And uh, regarding companies built on flow, um, at the end of 2020, um, actually, only 50 startups built on Flow, and the figure is over 609 months, with 25% um, months over month growth covering. And these projects cover um, sports, music, arts, gaming, technology, and many other categories. And now, Flow is entering a second circle of compounding network effects. Um, since, like, Amir Tasha become the first mainstream consumer grade blockchain application. Um, many traditional big brands have realized digital transformation and they started to build their own platforms on Flow, like um, NFL, USC, La Liga, um, Genius, Dr. Swiss, and many more. They are all ready to launch their own blockchain enable experience on Flow, uh, kicking off a next cycle of compounding network effects which already has much more weight from the start. Um, and what's more, after the initial stage of gathering enough users, we need to enrich the virtual world with different experiences. 
Um, a clear trend is that traditional tech companies are coming to flow, quickening their uh, integration with blockchain industry to provide users with more distinguished immersive experiences. Um, examples include the XR companies. Um, besides like Web2 giants, they are also accelerating their explorations um, as the only blockchain that uh, actively embrace on the Web2 company's migration from the start, uh, Flow will continue to be the bridge between traditional companies and the decentralized world to create more network effects and um, <clears throat> provide more diversified experiences to the users in the metaverse. Um, thank you. Um, that's all from my side. Uh, thank you for the sharing. Um, we also have a little question for you, Ms. Amber. We are all, um, the question is, we are all concerned about <clears throat> the next step, what dappers will do or what flow will do in the future NFT market. Is there anything new that you would like to share with us? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, like, um, actually, I, I I just said like um, because we have the uh, first wave of user base, and then what we care more about current at the current stage is um, after bringing these users in, what experiences can we bring them? Um, how do we provide them with more energies of their NFTs? So um, currently, we're actively looking at um, DeFi Dex or like. Uh, immersive experience, this kind or, or like these kind of products, which could provide users with better experience of their NFTs. So I think that's um, not a big direction after the first wave of a um, big number of users coming to flow ecosystem. Then we can grow it to a mar much bigger number. All right. Thank you for the answering and thank you for the time, Ms. Amber. Yeah, thanks a lot. So here is the end of day two. If you still have questions, again, we'll be posting our Discord channel on the chat window. And please feel free to join us and have fun. Also, a quick reminder for the next week's schedule. <clears throat> we'll have topics related to um, develop a blockchain game. You will team with other talent developers and make teamworks together. So it will be really fun and make sure you don't miss it. Again, thank you for everyone um, attended today. And we will see you guys next week. You have a great night. Bye-bye.